Welcome back to Burn Peak. I'm Seth, and today I'm with Calvin and Truman from Park Tool, and they are much taller than me. We just got back from Burn Park. We installed trailhead repair stations there, and Park Tool actually sponsored the Kitty Trail there. We're gonna show it to you soon, but today we're actually gonna do some bike repair stuff. Yeah. You guys are normally dealing with bike mechanics kind of as your audience. Here we have a mix of people. So today I thought we would do 10 rapid fire tips and they're not all advanced. Some of the things are as simple as just tightening your wheel on, but I thought they could be useful to people who might be too embarrassed to ask. So let's get started. So the first tip is about your headset. Basically all the bearings in here, your fork, your stem, they all clamp together to make your headset nice and tight. And a lot of times your headset is not tight because when you first put your bike together, you ride it, everything sort of works in and then it loosens up. Now I'll get on people's bike and notice it's loose. Here's how you can check. You hear that sound? That's a loose headset. Now if it's really loose, you can just do this and feel it. But one of the easiest ways is to check on the ground. Put the bike on the ground, grab the front brake. If you can feel some play, it's loose. And if you can't feel anything, put your fingers right here. And if you can feel any movement, your headset is loose. So how do you tighten it? It's actually really easy. You're just gonna loosen these pinch bolts. You'll know they're loose enough because your handlebars are gonna move independently from your front wheel. So now you're gonna tighten this. You don't wanna over tighten it because then you're gonna crush your bearings. Squeeze your front brake, do that check. Make sure your handlebars are straight. Tighten the stem bolts back up. Same thing with the stem bolts. They don't have to be super duper tight, but you want it so you, you can't move your handlebars around independently from your wheel. And that's how you tighten a headset. Today, what we're gonna do is talk about the secret sauce we want your bikes to have. No, 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 not this. The stuff that goes on here. We want our bolts, nuts, all of the fasteners on the bike to be tight. And to get that, we turn the threads, flexes the steel, pulls it together, keeps that energy, that preload on all the components correctly tight. To get there, you turn it a certain amount. That's the tricky part. How do we get there? Torque wrenches can be good. Hold it the correct place, it goes click, we're happy. We have other types of wrenches called a beam type literally flexes. One beam says sill, one flexes. It's applying a certain amount of load. It's good still to understand perceived torque. It's a feeling that you're gonna develop with experience and some comprehension and also some math. Let's talk about what those numbers mean. I wanna get a pedal tight. I'm gonna pull it up to 200 inch pounds. What's that mean? 200 pound effort, an inch long wrench it's kind of hard to grab and get 200 pounds of load on. Can't do it. We're gonna to go to eight inches. 25 pounds of effort here, that I can do. So, the load at the end is gonna be multiplied by the length to deliver the force at the head. A gallon of milk, eight pounds at the end of four inches, 32 pounds of load. Two inches here, eight pounds, 16 pounds force, at the bolt head. Longer can be better. I'm gonna be talking about carbon assembly compound. You can also use this on aluminum parts, but it's for creating friction. On bikes, we always talk about reducing friction. Why would we want something to increase friction? Well, there's a lot of areas on a bike that have static joints. So like your handlebars to your stem. You don't want those to be moving. You don't want your bars to be rolling on you when you land after a big jump or a small jump. You want them to stay stationary. So. Friction paste can go in between them, but why would they slip? Carbon fiber is a slippery material and prone to crushing. So increasing the torque on the bolts could cause a problem crushing the handlebars. So to keep the torque values lower and create enough friction to hold it stationary, we're gonna use a product like SAC2 to create friction in that interface. Which brings us to our next topic, dropper seat posts. They're pretty sensitive when it comes to seat collars. So as we're seeing here, this seat post is not going all the way up in its extension, which you want so that you can have full power with your legs. But we also don't want the post to move, which the solution is less torque on the seat binder bolt or the seat post clamp. A lot of times you can reduce the amount of torque on the fastener here and then it'll go up. But if we reduce it too much, like it is now, then you can rotate this back and forth. 
So what are we gonna do here? We're gonna put assembly compound here to increase the amount of friction while reducing the amount of torque needed on the fastener. So if you have an entry level mountain bike or an older mountain bike, chances are you have a quick release skewer and lever and one of these old style hubs where there's a little nut right here. Now, if you've had the bike for a while, if you've ridden it hard, ridden it through creeks, chances are you could benefit from rebuilding your hub. And it's actually really easy. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So first things first, take your quick release skewer off, file it someplace that you're not gonna lose it. What you're gonna have to do is take the hub apart and it's pretty obvious, you just unscrew it. Now, this one has kind of a little rubber seal. You can get that off. I have a nylon pick that I'm just gonna get in there and now you can see we're down to the nuts. So now we're gonna take the hub apart by unscrewing all the nuts, but don't do it like over your swimming pool or something. Make sure you have a tray underneath because ball bearings are going to fall out of here, but don't be scared. They're not hard to put back in. Okay, so now you're gonna take everything that you just took out of that hub and you're gonna clean it up, clean all the grease off of it, all the grime. You can use brake parts cleaner, WD-40, rags, whatever, just get it all out of there. Now we're just gonna put it back together the same way you took it apart. It's not that hard. Start off by separating the bearings into two equal piles. I have 10 in each one if you have like nine in one and 10 in the other, then you're missing a bearing. First place you should probably check is inside the hub, but we have them all, so we're gonna put it back together. So you're gonna pack that hub with plenty of grease. That's gonna help the bearing stick in place, but also you can put the axle part way through and that's gonna stop them from falling in the hole. So now you can just take your bearings and just drop them in around the axle. Okay, so we're gonna screw this all back together the way it was, but especially if you have a quick release, you're not gonna want it tightened down all the way. I'm gonna show you how to check to see if it has the right tension. There should be the tiniest, tiniest wiggle. Take just a teensy, teensy bit. Because when you actually tighten your quick release skewer, it's gonna tighten them down just a little bit more because it's squeezing on it. So when you're done, it should spin way smoother. Just make sure you clean off your rotor with some rubbing alcohol in case you got some grease on it when fixing it. And that's how you repack a hub. Hey everyone, I'm riding my new bike. It's been going great. I just got it or I just worked on it at home and uh, it's been a good ride, but shifting, I can't shift wheel really anymore. It's just not shifting good. When in doubt, turn it out. The barrel adjuster, bring it out, go a half a turn. Well, why? The cable is gonna seat on in, it's gonna settle into the housing, it's more likely the cable's gotten slack than anything. So it's worth the try. Gonna come out one click there, two click, that's a quarter and a quarter. See if it's better shifting. If you gotta go more than a whole turn out, there's other issues, Ugh. stop. Look at it, get things readjusted. So quick, quick on the fly tip, when in doubt, turn it out. So your shifting is way out of whack. You tried setting the tension, B-screw, limits, everything, nothing's working. Chances are your derailleur hanger is out of alignment. Now, we have a gauge for that, a derailleur hanger alignment gauge, but chances are you also don't have a derailleur hanger alignment gauge, and so there is another option. Now, to do this first, you're gonna have to take your derailleur hanger off. So now that we have the derailleur hanger off, I'm gonna show you how to test and see if it's aligned. It's called the float test. Okay, so to do the float test, you're gonna need a pint glass with some water in it. If you don't have a pint glass, that's okay. You can use a plastic cup or anything like that. You're gonna drop it in, wait and see if it floats back up to the top. If it does, your derailleur hanger is fine. If it stays at the bottom, you need to purchase a new one and install it on the bike just like we removed it and then your shifting should be working perfectly. So the great thing about the flow test is it also works for spark plugs, relays, fuses. It's a really, really useful trick. So if you don't have a cup, you don't have water, you can also put the derailleur hanger down on a flat surface and see if it sits flat. And if it doesn't, indeed it is bent. Yeah, you can try and bend it back, but it's usually good to just replace it unless you have a proper gauge. That is the quick release skewer that holds our wheel in, but it's gotta be on tight. If it's in loose, the wheel can fall off. We all consider that a bad thing. Now, what's too tight and what's too loose? 
That's what we want to talk about. We pulled the skewer out to see what it is inside the cap. There's a nut on this side, and there's this housing on this side. So when this is open, it backs away. When we close that, you see that come down. That gives you the power, and that's the magic, the power of the cam closing down. To adjust it and fine tune that is right here with the nut. Now, we need to take the adjusting nut opposite the lever and snug it down. However, if I go too far and try and close the lever, it's gonna be meeting, meeting resistance too early. So I have to open up, loosen counterclockwise on the adjusting nut. Now my resistance starts way past 90. That's too weak. We want that in between, right there. Cam is hitting resistance about 90. Push it all the way shut and it's fully closed. It is now safe. It's important that the lever go past center. This is not past center. This has to go flush. So the straight section of the cam should be parallel to the wheel. There, that is fully closed, properly tight. Thumbs up, bike rider, go to it. So another really useful thing to have in your shop is rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, because it acts as a solvent. It really kind of breaks down grease. But what's really great about it is it doesn't leave any residue behind. So things that you don't want the residue behind for are like if you're applying a sticker, cleaning off your suspension after a particularly dirty ride, the stanchions, you want to clean those afterwards so those particles don't get drawn in to the suspension components. Also for your brakes, if you do a brake bleed and any oil gets out, you can wipe that right up and leaves no residue behind. A really good one is for rotors. Your fingers have oils on them that can be left behind on your rotor and it can slightly contaminate your pads. So cleaning your rotors off with alcohol is really nice. So most flat pedals today have replaceable pins. So if one of the pins gets damaged, you can actually take it out and put a new one in. Now they all have these little two millimeter hex heads in them, but that's just to put the pin in. If you're replacing the pin, you're not gonna be able to get a hex wrench in there. And if you can, you probably don't need to replace it. So how do you replace the pins? Well, first, you want to try using that two millimeter hex, but you're going to have to get all the dirt out. So take a pick and get all the dirt out. Now you're going to get one shot at this. So do a really, really good job and get as much of that dirt out as possible. So you can see this pin is kind of rounded off all the way down to the base. And so if you try and grab it with some pliers or with a vice grip, the, the plier just kind of slides off of it and you can't get a really good handle on it. And so, if you get your file right down to the base, you're gonna scratch your pedal up a little bit, but that's okay, it smashed into rocks. You can kinda of file a flat spot, which you can then grab and turn the pedal pin. We're still not having much luck grabbing this pedal pin because it's just too much of a mangled nub. That's when you gotta go for the screw extractor. So you can get these kits at the hardware store and they're great for all sorts of bolts and screws. So these extractors are two-sided. You have this little spiral bit over here that's meant to be run in reverse. And then you have this little cutting bit that's made to be run in reverse. But with these pedal pins, it's almost the same size as a pedal pin. So unless you have an extractor kit that's way smaller than this, you're gonna have to use a small drill bit to make a hole through the center of the pedal pin to get to it. Okay, so you're gonna wanna drill straight down and you don't wanna drill fast when you're drilling metal. You just wanna put plenty of pressure on the drill and drill straight and forwards. And the idea here is you wanna drill out the middle of the bolt, not the whole pedal, because then you're gonna mess up the threads and you're never gonna be able to get another pin in there. Now, everything in the screw extractor kit is meant to be run in reverse because it's meant to be taken out. If we're lucky, we can push it down here with the drill, run it in reverse, and it'll grab it and pull it out. So yeah, get yourself a screw extractor kit. It's gonna come in handy for a lot more than just pedal pins. All right, so now we're gonna be talking about tool maintenance. What kind of maintenance would the tools that you use to maintain things need? And why would you want to maintain them? You get done with a particularly nasty job, maybe overhauling a hub. How do you clean this off? So one of the nice things is actually WD-40. WD-40 is not the greatest lubricant because it doesn't have a lot of staying power and it doesn't provide a lot of lubrication. But what it does provide 
is it leaves a residue behind and that residue prevents corrosion. So this is basically reduces the chances of any rust. Another thing is lubricating the pivot points of your tool. You can use like a petroleum base um, chain lube and then kind of work that in. And you can feel these getting a little bit easier to pivot. And then we'll clean all that lubricant off and there might be a little bit that keeps on coming out after that. Another fun tip for those who are really pretty particular, the black on a lot of our tools is a black oxide. It's a very robust coating that you put onto a tool. And sometimes on like high use items, it can take that coating off and leave it silver. So something that you can use to repair that is a gun blue. So basically you'd take this gun blue and you've got your item here. You can see the tip is silver because it's been well used. So now we can take our gun blue, apply that, don't need a ton of it, let that sit for a second and it looks brand new again. So it's a really nice tip to be able to get your tools that are fairly well used back into a basically brand new condition. So as I said, Park Tool sponsored the Kid Trail at Burn Park. We installed bike repair stations, which you'll see on the other channel. And I figured what better opportunity than to do a bunch of rapid fire bike tips for everybody. Have experts here who actually know what they're talking about. We do fly by the seat of our pants here, Burn Peak, just a little bit. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Check out Park Tools YouTube channel if you wanna see really in-depth bike repair videos that cover every facet of your bike. And thanks for riding with us today. I'll see you next time. <laughs>